Was that a show or was that a show? God, WandaVision was so good. And here's the thing, man, like the first two episodes were slow, but I'm so glad I stuck around for the whole thing. I feel like those people who bailed out with like episode number two and were like, this show's boring and dumb. I'm never gonna watch it. I feel like they're feeling it now, right? Like. <laughs> <laughs> the whole world is hyped about the ending of the show and they're like what wait what happened no i should have stuck around for the show <laughs> i hope they're feeling it now but uh the ending of wandavision yeah man this show was amazing this show was so good okay so let's talk about this post credit scene with wanda right because this is everything right there's so much in this like if you assuming that they're gonna do what i think they're gonna do there's so much in this post credit scene that it doesn't it's not even funny okay so the first question is where's wanda at all right i think wanda's at wonder gore mountain now if wanda's at Wondergore Mountain, this is huge for a couple different reasons. The first is because of the fact that Wondergore Mountain is basically the home of a guy by the name of Herbert Wyndham, right? Herbert Wyndham is also known as the High Evolutionary. I don't think we're going to see him, right? I mean, he does have a lot of history with Wanda, but Herbert Wyndham is a guy who basically figured out a way to use technology to effectively speed up his evolution. The guy's super powerful, right? He's super capable, but he really kind of focuses on staying in Wondergore Mountain, doing his own thing, and using what's called his new men, which is basically like artificially enhanced animals that are basically given anthropomorphic ability right so like think of something like the island of dr moreau and that's basically what it is but the important thing about this is is the significance of wonder gore mountain because herbert wyndham's not the only person who occupies that place so one i was right about the dark hold and this is important now the reason why it's important is because over on comics explain i've got a video where i explained the dark hold right broke it down in a super nuanced way i don't know if any of you guys had a chance to check that video out yet but it's super important if you want to understand the whole significance behind the dark hold but the dark hold as we know was written by Cthone, and Cthone wrote the dark hold when he was on earth in what would later become wonder gore mountain in an attempt to try to bring back cathone and use them use them for their own ends a sorceress by the name of morgan Le Fay and her followers who were called dark holders came to the realization that cathone could not be controlled and so the only way to basically keep him from destroying the world was to lock his essence away in wonder gore mountain and assuming we go with what the hm1 said from like the doctor strange film there were all kinds of horrors that were out there and if she really did do ultimately what doctor strange did in infinity war where she had used the time stone to see what kind of threats were out there and then nullify those threats before they became a massive problem. It's not beyond the realm of possibility that the Ancient One had faced off against Cthone at some point in time and locked him away in Wondergore Mountain with the expectation that nothing would ever come of it. Now, of course, we know that a person cannot see past their own death. And so the Ancient One would never have known that Wanda was going to become the Scarlet Witch and that she was going to effectively unleash Cthone inside of Wondergore Mountain because that happened after the Ancient One died. That's one of the things that she explained in Doctor Strange is she can't see past her own death when she uses the time stone because she's not alive. So it makes perfect sense. Now, here's why this matters. In this post credit scene, there was this scenario where you heard like the kids of Wanda Maximoff. Now, there's a couple different ways that you can interpret this, right? You can interpret this from the perspective of she is kind of experiencing, you know, a previous instance where she struggled and like, you know, kind of remembering the battle, all that kind of stuff. It could be something more metaphorical, which is like the Marvel Cinematic Universe telling us Wanda still struggles with like her kids and vision and all that kind of stuff. Or it could be Cthone messing with her head. And I think that's what's happening, right? Because one of the things that Agnes said is that Wanda has no idea what she's unleashed. There's precedence for this, right? So the important thing to take away from this is that Wanda is what we call a Nexus being, right? And I'll comics explain, I've got a video explaining that too, right? The whole significance of Nexus beings and why they matter. If you haven't seen that video, the long and short of it is that basically a Nexus being is a person whereby all mystical energy, so magical energy flows through them, right? So essentially the reason why Wanda, or at least the reason why Agnes says that Wanda's power exceeds that of Dr. Doctor Strange is because there are some sources of energy out there that Doctor Strange just cannot access. If he's walking down a, a hallway of doors and he's got a key, that key is not going to unlock every single door. So there's some sources of energy he just can't use. Wanda has a master key. That's the benefit of being a Nexus being, is you can use any and all sources of energy that exist out there. That's why she's more powerful than Doctor Strange. Now, the important thing is that with her being on Wondergore Mountain, if she really is a Nexus being like we say she is, then that means that she can do things like access the multiverse, so on and so forth. There are like limits or not really limits, but there are forces out there that exist to make sure that like a Nexus being doesn't just run rampant throughout the entire multiverse. So like the Time Variance Authority, the Living Tribunal, they exist to make, make sure that kind of stuff doesn't happen, that like Wanda doesn't screw with the timeline or anything like that. But with all the power that she has, in the end, it won't really matter. But I think that with, with this being the case, with her basically stepping into the role, quote unquote, of becoming the Scarlet Witch, I think that what she's done is initiated something 
something akin to the eighth day storyline in Marvel Comics. Now, for those of you guys who don't know what the eighth day storyline is, it has nothing to do with the Scarlet Witch, but it does have everything to do with a guy by the name of Sidorak. But the whole idea behind this is that at some point in the past in Marvel, there was a being or a group of people called the Octessens, right? They were eight demonic entities and they had made a bet based on which one of them was the strongest. And so what they did is they created these different artifacts and they put them on earth. And the first person to pick up one of those artifacts would start the eighth day event. The first person to do that in Marvel Comics was Kane Marco when he picked up the Crimson Gem of Sidorak and became the Juggernaut. And what it basically meant is that other individuals out there, several other random people would just be pulled towards these different artifacts that would ultimately pick them up. And then in effect, humanity would be divided into eight separate armies. Those armies would all go to war against each other. And then whichever army prevailed would prove that particular demon entity to be the strongest among all of them. I don't think that's exactly what's happening, but I think that what's happened here is that by Wanda stepping into the role of the Scarlet Witch and Wanda getting her hands on the Darkhold and then investigating it, that she's basically set in motion a means by which Cthone will take over her and Cthone will kind of do his own thing. Now, whether or not this equates to a great big, huge multiversal contest, I don't know, but I do think that it's something akin to that. This is her equivalent of picking up the Crimson Gem of Sidorak on Earth by the Juggernaut. She's effectively set things in motion. This basically means that because she's now the Scarlet Witch, maybe this is what Cthone was waiting for, right? For an individual to pop up who had an absurd amount of power that Cthone could tap into and then use that power to move himself into the earthly plane. Because here's the important thing to understand, guys, for all the power that Agatha had and all her knowledge of witchcraft and all that kind of stuff and all the things that Doctor Strange could do, they have nothing on Cthone. Absolutely nothing on this guy. It's not even close, right? It's, it's not even a contest. The fact that Wanda's using chaos magic, that is a magic that belongs to Cthone. He basically created it. Literally all arrows point to the idea that Wanda is in some form or fashion going to become, you know, whatever it is, some, some harbinger of Cthone or something like that. And that would make perfect sense if the Marvel Cinematic Universe expands the role of Cthone from just being this demon that wants to conquer Earth and they turn him into a demon that wants to conquer all of existence, then what better being to use than a Nexus being themselves? Somebody who could basically tap into other dimensions, who can tap into even the multiverse itself. And so if you have Cthone who takes over Wanda Maximoff and then in turn sets his sights on conquering the universe, that would happen like that, right? In the blink of an eye. Like the universe would just be totally taken over. And then from there, it just goes into the multiverse, right? And that would make sense if it's called the Multiverse of Madness because it would basically be Cthone and Wanda just kind of going through the multiverse and doing their own thing. Because something to understand here right now, Wanda's still in an exceedingly vulnerable state. Despite all of her power and all of her abilities, mentally, she can still be easily manipulated because of everything she's been through and how much she struggles. Now, I don't know if it'll be exactly done like that because the reality is it would be kind of boring if like, you know, she's gone through all of this stuff in WandaVision, which was basically just like the five stages of grief, right? That's basically all the show was. And then in turn, she's like taken over by somebody else. But it would be a really good nod to a being whose power is just so astronomical that there's no real way for Wanda to stand against him. Again, this really all just kind of comes down to the interpretation of Wanda hearing her kids' voices, that Cthone really is confined inside Wondergore Mountain. And we've seen that play out in Marvel Comics, right? That like Cthone confined inside the mountain, his evil basically permeated the entire land itself. So even the land would basically manifest in ways that would manipulate other people. It was always a way for Cthone to effectively reach out there. And I think that's cool. I think it's important to bring in this idea that there are beings out there who dwarf the power of Stephen Strange. It'd be a great way to like have the multiverse of madness, to have Wanda touring around the multiverse itself, to have Doctor Strange bringing back Agnes, to have things like where he pairs up with Baron Mordo, all that kind of cool stuff, right? Where it literally takes this kind of multiversal series of events in order to somehow bring Wanda down, that people have to effectively come together. It'd be a great swan song because like I've been saying here, Wanda is in effect the Marvel Cinematic Universe's version of Jean Grey because the Phoenix and the Dark Phoenix sagas, that was Jean Grey's swan song. That Jean Grey basically stepped into this enormous amount of power that she was able to use it for good initially and then a series of events unfolded whereby she was effectively corrupted by her power due to her emotional state and then went on a warpath. And the only way to bring that to an end was for her to basically die. And that would make sense if that was the case with Wanda because her story goes part and parcel with the story of Jean Grey from Marvel Comics. She's a person who popped up on the scene. She had initial early displays of power, telepathy, telekinesis, the power that she had, she didn't understand the full totality of it, a situation unfolded whereby Wanda basically came to the realization of the full amount of power that she had and then started using it for her own ends, only to discover that her own emotional state got the better of her, i.e. the Dark Phoenix Saga equivalent in Marvel Comics. She lost her mind, she started using her powers for nefarious ends, she was almost compromised by an enemy, which is what you saw happen to Jean Grey with Mastermind when he took over her, and then in turn, the day was saved, but it basically required her to die in the process. And I think that's exactly what's going to happen with Wanda, that Wanda comes into all this power, she starts messing with the Darkhold, 
world, not fully understanding what she's getting into because she's new to all this. If all you know is there is a book out there that will help you understand what your powers are and how to use them, but you don't understand the magical ties of that book, then it'd be very easy for an ev uh, for a demonic force that's exceedingly manipulative like Cthone to ease its way into her and then conquer her, like literally just take her over from the inside out before she even knows what happened. Suddenly, like all this power she has is being used for his own ends and there's nothing she can do to stop it. What a great redemption arc if like in the middle of this whole great big huge Doctor Strange multiverse of madness thing, it's Doctor Strange and all his forces fighting against Cthone from the outside and Wanda fighting against him from the inside. It'd be a great story. It'd be a, a, a great concept. But nonetheless, let me know what you guys think down in the comments section. I'm excited about this, but I I believe, I wholeheartedly believe Cthone is coming for Wanda. And when he gets a hold of her, all bets are off, right? Any chance that anybody has of like saving the earth is done. Because for all the glitz and glamour that Thanos had with the Infinity Gauntlet, that's absolutely nothing in comparison to the power of Cthone. Anyway, guys, we're going to bring this to an end. Make sure you check out all of our videos about WandaVision. It's been a great run. I love it. We're going to have a few other videos in store for you guys, top fives, things like that, highlighting our favorite moments from WandaVision. And I will catch you all later. Peace.